never too early to start is, is the way I, I feel. And so when we start to talk about Schoology and LMSs, a lot of times, you know, it started at the higher ed level. And now we do a lot of work at the high school, middle school level. But, you know, we want to start encouraging people seeing that trickle down into the elementary level. So Kelly, I'll pitch to you first. Um, what are some challenges you think that people um, face getting uh, LMSs and Schoology per se into the elementary level and, and just a couple of tips to get them started? Well, I think that as you mentioned, you know, for a long, you know, the origin of the LMS started in higher ed. And then I think people naturally thought that it was a good fit for secondary students. But I think that, you know, we've seen, especially with younger and younger kids using technology and, and getting into those learning spaces that, you know, they're, they're really ready to do some of those things online that we can do. Um, another, a barrier that, that used to be an issue uh, was often devices. And that's now also getting mitigated. We see more and more devices coming in, even if they're being used in stations or centers uh, or with paired devices, um, we're seeing that at younger, younger ages. Uh, and I also think that for elementary teachers especially, a lot of what they do may not be involving the computer all the time. And there may be a perception that, you know, I have to have students on the platform to really leverage something like Schoology. And there's a lot you can do as a teacher in terms of communication with parents or um, tracking student progress against standards, even if they're not in the platform at that time. Uh, and then, you know, as you mentioned, Mike, having a, a place to have kids safely learn how to, to interact in a discussion board uh, and do that even with recorded audio. Um, they don't have to necessarily have the keyboarding skills that maybe people think that they have to have to really engage at younger and younger ages. So I think there's a lot of potential in elementary. And so I think this is a really good topic for us to have because we get questions a lot about how do we use uh, Schoology with kids that are especially, you know, in K2. Um, and then also, of course, in 3.5, where we see a lot of great interactive dynamic content happening at those ages. Sara, you were in the classroom at the elementary level or preschool as well. Um, can you speak a little bit towards, um, Kelly brought it up, the communication aspect, you know, um, communication with parents, that sort of teamwork with parents at the elementary level is vital. and where you see the benefits of an LMS of Schoology in bridging that gap of communication between parents and uh, the teacher. Yeah, I, I would say my experience in the classroom is sort of the um, opposite of a learning lesson. Um, <laughs> in that I didn't really use any digital technology in my classroom. So you would try and be, you would be trying to kind of grab parents when they had a chance or parents would be trying to get your attention when you were in the middle of something. And it was just really hard to organize that communication factor. So what I've seen be really successful was not anything to do with my own classroom, but rather with the awesome schools that we've seen doing a really great job with Schoology. Um, and what I see being really successful is not even a focus on actually creating all of those parent accounts, because sometimes that is out of teachers' hands. They are not planning this rollout. They're not the ones in charge of bringing parents in. And maybe parents don't really want to come into the platform already. That might be a, a longer rollout goal. Um, but right from the get-go, the fact that parents can see what the students see is really exciting. So what we've seen in a lot of classrooms, it's kind of a unifying factor, is that teachers will create just a simple folder that's just parent communication. And that will have things like the forms that you would usually try and print out and give to the student, and especially at those younger years, it gets scrunched right up at the bottom of their backpack, never to be seen again. So <laughs> having the ability to put those forms online for students to be able to reaccess or parents to be able to print out their own accord, things like a scope and sequence, things like a homework planner, um, content that is just a little harder to get students to convey to their parents that parents also want to have the access to. But the fact that a student can log into their own Schoology account at home and a parent can actually look over their shoulder and see what the student sees. They can even peek at their grades. They can peek at some of the content that's available for them and the discussions that are going on. That's really exciting. Um, and that really opens up the channels of communication from teachers to parents from, from what I've seen. So what we've done this month for you guys is we've gone out into the field a bit and we've spoken to two teachers um, that we're going to hear from today, Teresa Vasquez and Jesse Buto. And we've just asked them a lot of questions revolving around how they have built their content out in their courses, what kind of experiences that they've had with their students, and how their students have responded. So, Sara, go ahead, why don't you give a quick introduction to Teresa. Yeah, um, Teresa is one of the most enthusiastic teachers I think I've ever had the pleasure of being able to work with. 
She teaches kindergarten at uh, the Donald Leonetti Elementary School in Fort Bend, uh, which is just outside of Houston, Texas. Um, and she is um, really focusing on building out content in her classroom. We had the opportunity to meet when we were working on the blended learning program with a group of teachers there, all specifically elementary, a whole cohort of elementary teachers that we were working with, which is incredible. The stuff that's going on already with that group is absolutely mind blowing. Um, and she, exactly as you said, Mike, she is doing some fantastic things, but she started small. So she talks a little bit about what you can expect to see from that initial baby steps in, dipping a toe in the water to see how it looks. Um, and I will mention, so we also struggled through a ton of internet problems that they were having in her area um, in Fort Bend. We both were sharing our webcams, but for some weird reason, the webcams didn't pick up on the recording. So the first about 10 minutes we're talking and you would have seen our webcams. I was even wearing a Schoology shirt. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't make the recording. So you just have to pretend like it's happening in your mind. But she does show us around her course. Um, and so the, the screen that she shared with me will pop in about 10 minutes in. But at the beginning, don't worry that you're not seeing audio. You're just seeing stock photos of our faces. So sorry about that. Right after that video, you'll see a brief interview I did with, with Jesse. And we talk a little bit more about the, some of the changes he's seen once he flipped his classroom. So let's get rolling. OK. Thank you, uh, Leapers, for joining us for our recording here. Um, I am here with Teresa Vasquez, who is one of our awesome um, contacts down in the Fort Bend School District. Um, Teresa, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, my name is Teresa Vasquez. I am a kindergarten teacher for Donald Leonetti um, at, in Fort Bend. And that's in Texas, Central Texas. <laughs> in Texas, yeah, in Texas. And we've had a chance to work together in a few different capacities. Um, and every time we've we've been able to chat with you and hear about what you're doing in your classroom, it's been not only inspiring to us, but it's been the sort of stories and content that we share with other people too to get them excited about using Schoology in elementary. So thank you for joining us um, and thank you for giving us your time. All of the internet craziness and all the stuff we've been talking about <laughs> all out of the side. And now we actually um, are getting our show on the road to get some of your awesome expertise around using Schoology. So a really big question to start. Um, you have been doing amazing things with your kindergartners using Schoology and you've been a real kind of uh, early adopter and a, a front runner in doing a lot of those awesome um, activities with your students using the platform. So when we're thinking about this big question that we keep talking about with our kindergarten through third grade student engagement, really how you can build those really rich and engaging classroom experiences for students. Um, how have you found that to be accessible in Schoology? And I'd love if you wanted to share a little bit about your course with us. So um, I created um, my course to fit my classroom room and what I've been familiar with um, and using you know technology with kids and then adapting the blended learning concept um, to fit my kids I, I love to create graphics I love to use images you know I do teach kindergarten so not all of them come in knowing how to read they, they don't know how to identify certain things so I use a lot of graphics I use a lot of pictures and because my love for creating them um, I I, I personalize them for myself, for my kids. And I believe that that definitely helps because my students automatically can get familiar with an icon that I've created and that I've showed them. And so that's how we navigate. That's how we first started to navigate through um, our Schoology course. And, and we started in November, I'm sorry, September, October time last year. Just something simple, um, small group. I created um, for my students to be able to log on, you know, I created a, a little template for them with each individual, um, in, all their information. And so they logged on that way. We use QR codes. So um, that's how we first started. It's taken us some time to just kind of be able to navigate. Um, but I believe that like the way we started was a great kind of introduction into Schoology for my kids because immediately they were engaged and I would use whole group I would show them on the big screen say and introduce you to something guys something really cool exciting and they would love it and so I had introduced them to a fun um, quizlet that I created and so our first interaction with uh, our small group was they actually once they logged in they got to immediately go to a quizlet and do it all by themselves instead of in whole group and they loved it so I could record them or, or I could watch them and they were just completely engaged they're like oh I beat my score and you know I got 27 minutes this is being like 27 seconds or whatever so it was really great it was fun to watch the kids enjoyed it um, and so that was our first introduction and so slowly but surely I've just I keep adding and you know I had a little more rigor to it and I added a little bit more options 
questions for them. And at this point, from the beginning of the year, to this point, we actually, a couple of weeks ago, we started our choice boards. And in kindergarten, I believe, I believe that this was a phenomenal kind of idea and concept. And what I noticed about my class was that they were quieter. Yeah. I was like, you guys having fun? And they're like, yes. And I, I, can't, I can't help but believe that it's, it's with technology, but they, they adapted so quickly to it because it was their choice. They got to choose what they wanted to do. And immediately I, I gave them an incentive to, okay, well, if you post what you did today, then, you know, I'm going to have some, you know, Cubs cash, what we do, or a reward for those of you who, you know, are, are responding to our discussion. And it was, I don't even know what to say, because it was literally like I would have my um, notification, so-and-so posted, so-and-so posted, so-and-so posted, and it would just, I would give them a five-minute warning because they would get upset when we had to leave for out class and they hadn't posted yet. So I was like, okay, guys, five-minute warning. Okay, guys, 10-minute warning. And they were just excited about it. So yes, it's been a really great um, adventure for me and my class, and I'm looking forward to next year now that I have a little bit more information of what I, how I want it to run, what I want it to do, and, and what works best for us. And that's so key when you're thinking about said slowly but surely and this idea of, okay, this year I'm going to do what I can and I'm going to start using the tools that are <laughs> engaging and that work. And you immediately saw that a Quizlet was the first thing that would get them engaged. Yeah. And maybe now you're doing something like a choice board, which is way more complex and probably not the very first thing that you would do if you were starting to use the platform. So yeah. <laughs> gradual rollout. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. You talked a little bit about um, that login process. What was we had we yeah. talked about that before? What was your kind of first experience with your kindergartners, knowing that, as you said, some of them don't even really have words and letters and and um, keyboard recognition yet? What was that process of just getting them logged in and getting them familiar with that? How did that look? So, uh, with my different uh, guided reading groups, um, I that's how I started it. I, I went with my higher my higher group first, and I started with them. It literally took us about twenty twenty five minutes to log on, um, but once we logged on, our iPads it would remember them. So it took us 25 seconds the next time around and it just got easier and easier. Um, so I did that with them first, kind of got them familiar with it. I got them interested and engaged in, in doing little things, discussions with me or just logging on to look at a story or, or video that I created in my read box. And um, once they got really good at it, then I let them, um, then I let them go and help a friend. So later on, they got to do it together. But Eventually, I had all my students come and all my students log on by themselves. And it was a little more difficult for, you know, the students who didn't really have letter idea. They really couldn't, you know, spell their name because they had to type it all out. And I helped them. <laughs> um, but once we all logged on, logged in, you know, they got to go to Quizlet. And like I said, they all loved it because it was something that they got to do with me on the big screen. And um, they wanted to take turns and they had to they were able to do it by themselves. So that was something they really enjoyed. Um, so How do QR codes come into that. So that's what we used first. So they had to scan, they had to scan the code that I created. And what I did is I linked um, my home room. Um, and there's two different ways because one way didn't work and there was another way. And I'm, I'm, I have to go back to double check which way worked the best because it, if it takes us to Schoology and we log in, it doesn't, it, it gives us an error. But when, when we log in through Office 360, five that's how it was able to work right. and so once we used the qr code we would scan for my homeroom and um it would take us straight to office 365 and then once the students logged in with their you know um student dot four bin at you know a dot com or whatever um and put in their password then it would take them automatically to our homeroom awesome. and that was the first way that we started logging in and eventually we just saved it to our homeroom or to like our, our desk or our screen, our home screen, or whatever, and um, we've been clicking on that. On occasion, it it boots us out, so we have to we've had to log on a couple of times. Um, but it's it's a much easier process than it was in the beginning. <laughs> and then, so once they've gotten through that process and you've taught them that, and everyone's familiar with it, and your iPads have helped with that with saving some of those names. When they're actually in your homeroom, and this might be a great a great point to share a little bit about your course. How do you get them engaged in the content that you actually put on your course? Because you were talking about it being visual and, and organizing each folder with groups. How did you encourage them to, to get excited about that? What did that look like? 
Um, well, it, it's really interesting because I had one student tell their mom, well, you know, she had said, well, quacks, they get to come to school with you all the time and bunnies don't. And it's, it's, I, I, it, I chuckled because, you know, we were, as we were learning, it was a little more difficult for my bunnies than it was for the quacks. And as soon as I was able to get them all on and really start having them you know, get log on, on, logging on more. It was just they are already what they wanted to do it. It was something they all wanted to be able to do to go and do because um, my my quacks were my higher group is what I call them. Um, and so I would meet with them and then I would send them off to go and you know go back and reflect on a book that we had already read or go back and you know read a story that was online. Um, and they. All, all the kids wanted to be able to do that. And again, I, I keep coming back to maybe it's choice. Maybe it's, you know, I, I can't pinpoint it yet, but whether it's choice or whether it's being able to kind of venture off and be on their own to learn, um, they they all already wanted to do that. They were just something that that I felt like they were excited about all, all on their own. So it didn't take much encouraging after the, at that point because they would see other kids like, well, what about us? We want to go. And so it, it kind of fueled themselves, you know, to be able to, to do that. And of course, I let them do, you know, go with partners. They could work by themselves or they can partner, you know, because they, they would go off with their groups. So right. that explains it a little bit. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And then do you think you can share your screen with us so we can see a little bit about how that looks like within that folder structure? Um, and you mentioned that you would organize your reading groups by those quacks and the peeps and the different uh, groupings from your books. What does that actually and, look like? And what it is, is so, and just before I, I want to let you guys know, before I, I, I log in, I have two different um, big icons on my homeroom because everything's in my homeroom. And my first one, I call it my lion's den. And the lion's den is where we have all of our guided reading we have whenever we do small group that's where everything is going to be housed when I click on my lion's den you'll see it and then I also have my Schoology den and the Schoology den is literally a link to every single one of my courses but again I use my icons instead of my kids having to go and click on the course and read it because we're still learning how to read in kindergarten um, but they're able to use the icons and the colors that we coordinate with our subjects um, to be able to access our Schoology. So I'm going to first show you my lion's den. And this is where we have all of our guided reading groups. Let me know if you can see. Yeah. Can you see okay? Right. That's perfect. Thank you. So this is my homeroom. And so my students know that this is um, our lion's den. And this is where we go to access all of our um, workstation and guided reading groups. And then this here is my Schoology Den. So I'm gonna click Lion's Den first. Um, we've added a lot of stuff. This is our choice boards. This is what we've recently been doing. Our read box, our library, and then Raz Kids and Epic. And this is all links to reading. So this is, these are my quacks. And this is the first time when I first had the folder, this is the only thing I had. I had all my guided reading groups. And I, I basically use it, um, the peeps and the big wide world science videos, we love them. So, <laughs> um, but if I click on my quacks, um, I have a few things here. Um, the first thing after doing our Quizlet, this is our Quizlet. So this is our Quizlet that we did. Uh, it was our first thing. It was a, a Quizlet ABC match. And so they got to hit start and then they play the game here. And basically they just match and then it gives them a time. Um, they loved it. So let's see here. Go back out here. Um, um, Sasha was the second thing that we did. And this is a story that I had wrote, it's like an ebook. Um, and this was the first, their first kind of interaction. Um, they had to click on to read it. And it actually gives them direction. So I had put this together for them. Um, and then it gives them a sentence stem. And, and I basically, all this here, I say in the audio here for the kids so they're able to, to go. And then they just go ahead and they read it. They push play. And it's basically an ebook about my my sister's dog that came to visit with me. And so it's the, it's the story through the eyes of Sasha, um, the boxer. And um, so these are all the characters that I created. Um, <clears throat> they're actually, uh, it's basically just pictures and then also um, 
the avatars. And so my students get to pick it. So in the beginning, uh, we did Sasha November 8th. <laughs> and it was, um, Brandon said Bobo was her favorite, Maybach is the kitty. Um, and so eventually later on, um, if you notice from the 8th to the 9th, they started to type a little bit more. Um, I like Sasha because she is the main character. So it's it's pretty fun to see kind of the progression of that. Um, let's see here, back to my quacks. Um, this was another one that we did. Um, I posted it, uh, let's see here. I believe this one was, no, this was the fourth that we did. And this is a baby, baby, or this is baby lion. And it's a story that my quacks had read. And it tells them basically, you know, what your favorite characters. This is during the time that we were talking about characters. Um, and then, so my students were able to post on 18th. Amazing. And then Ms. V went back to the repost. So I like Baby Lion. And you can tell, like, they didn't know how to space <laughs> um, yeah. Baby Lion because he's brave. And then I like Father Lion. So, and this is just kind of a little bit of what we did here. Amazing. And it looks like you didn't grade those yet. How do you, how do you no. uh, go back? Um, and what's the next? For me, for me, grading will be, um, I, I guess, a little bit later. For right now, I just put it as a partition, like a par participation grade um, for my students, um, just getting familiar with it. But it can definitely be something that I can use um, later on. I know that for Sasha, I had a quiz, if I'm not mistaken, that they were able to do. Again, I put directions, audio, and then and I give them graphics. That's one question. And Sasha, Sasha is the boxer that goes to Aunt Terry to visit Aunt Terry. And it just tells them, it reads it to them. Um, and then this one here, they're able to put it in order. Mm -hmm. They had to put it in order. Um, and they just move it around. Right. So simple. Mm -hmm. okay. um, that's definitely something I want to utilize a little bit more next year. Um, so, but it takes a little time for me to create. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, and even just like, like seeing that question where you have a scroll bar within that ordering question, that takes a lot of getting used to for little ones to say, oh, I've got a scroll bar for the whole Schoology page, but then also within it, there's a second one and familiarizing that with them with that is awesome. But as you say, yes. it's a lot of front loading. There's a lot of work that goes into this. And even, you know, you haven't even shown us our most, your most recent thing around choice boards, which is fantastic, but a lot of prep as well. So when we yes. think about our elementary teachers who are a little bit, you know, further down the down the road, um, at the beginning of the road, when we're thinking about how do we encourage them and and of course there's a lot of hesitation, um, there can be some sort of fear factor there around that. What have you found to be successful when you're working with your colleagues around encouraging them to to get to a place where you are? So what I remind them is that once I've created it, it does take a little bit of prep, but once I created it it's already created and I don't have to do it again. I can share it with them and I can, we, we can share, we can just by a click of a button. And that's the part that I think they think, they think about it and they're like, hmm, okay. So once they put a little bit of work into it, it's already, it's already done. So it's organizing for me that I'm trying to get everything that I've done and then just kind of put it somewhere where I can share with everybody and then they, everybody. So once we get familiar with that a little bit more, maybe having a place to um, save it for, you know, any kindergarten teacher um, within Schoology and then them just being able to just click it and getting accustomed to that as opposed to going to make copies or finding it in your files, you just click on a folder. And so th that's something that I'm, I'm working on um, making happen so that we're able to to use those because even in our exemplars we have different uh, folders already and schooled in Schoology as a district we have different things that they've already created that we can just click and I add those to my folders and it's just getting accustomed to adding things like that knowing what's on there what the content is and then sharing it but I believe that for me it's going to be smarter not harder because once you're done with it it's already created and anybody that creates something that's engaging for their students we'd be able to share just house it somewhere for everybody to share everybody to click on um, and that for me gets me excited because there's so many great ideas that I have and I know there's a lot of great ideas out there um, we just have to figure out how to share it all and make it more of an effort in time um, to take the time to share it yeah. um, I encourage the I encourage them in a way that I I share with them what I have, what I've done, what's possible. Um, and I think that for us, there's a lot of things out there that we can go and search, but it's actually giving it to them that it's like, the, this is what you need, this is what you do. Um, 
whenever I do my tutorials, I, I make like a screenshot of everything with the how to so they see what I've done. Um, and for me, I believe that 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 helps to to encourage them and it's, instead of not knowing what to do or how to do it. They're able to see it and then it, it makes it a little easier to um, take that adventure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know when we shared um, that fantastic sway page that you made with some of our colleagues that were thinking about, you know, how how can we encourage our schools who have already started using it really heavily in middle and high school, but there's some fear around that elementary and having the little ones use it. And mm -hmm. that sway page was super exciting. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you did there? I can pull it and up here. 365 school, this would be similar to a, a Google site as well. It's a really cool um, kind of website creation tool within 365, right? Basically, it talks about uh, what I, how I started Schoology, what Schoology has meant to me, um, how I how I utilize it. Um, and then logging in, um, I have here, and this is a video of them logging in. Um, this is actually, um, I don't want to, so this is actually the Ms. V's homeroom that I created with their QR code. This is actually the first um, thing that when that this is what we used. You see it here on the table. Right. <laughs> um, this is what we used to first log in, and so this was my students. And one of them said, "Oh, that took forever. That it took so long." <laughs> in the video, you can see it's great. And then after that, like I said, it took us about twenty. Ten minutes the first time, and then the second time was like twenty five seconds. It was great. Um, and my sister okay. is well, in second grade. I know you're gonna get to go too. Wait, Emma. No. Put it down for me, Maddie. Yes. <laughs> um. So, uh, that just kind of talks about um a logging on with a QR code and anybody you can scan it and it should take you to Schoology if it'll take you to Office 365 first and then it'll take you to your Schoology. Um, so this is how I organized um a way to allow my students to know which iPad to use, which they were already log logged on to, because it took a long time, but we wanted to make sure we just got back to the one that was already saved. Um, and so students know that wherever they go, um, this is the iPad they used. And the other day during choice boards, we had to go back and revisit where you're supposed to be and whose iPad you're supposed to, which iPad to use, because then it all got mixed up. And so that was the learning lesson for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, but, um, as a kindergarten, as a kindergartners, you know, they, they were able to figure out, oh, okay, well, so if someone has my iPad, I can't use the other ones and they have to partner up with someone else. Um, let's see here. And so this was my quacks logging on for the first time. Um, there's a lot of excitement there. It's a lot of fun. And then this was, this is actually the Quizlet um, that originally, I think the one I showed you before was my copy, but this is the Quizlet. Again, it tells them what to do. Um, I use the graphics and the pictures to kind of share with them where they're supposed to go. And this is actually just a screenshot. And then this is another one that they, that they actually play. Right. So um, let's see here. This was another one that we did for just getting familiar with some um, letter ID. This is them playing their Quizlet. They were very excited. <laughs> And then this just talks about my homeroom here. Um, again, what I showed you, the lion's den, and then my quacks folder. And this is initially how it was. Just this was the only thing we had in there in the beginning. And then gradually, I'm just, I just keep adding stuff. Choice boards is something that you guys taught us a while back. Um, and so my students know that they get their iPad of whom they share with. And they also are able to have different partners. But they get to, they get to pick with. Um, what they would like to do. This is our pretty much our workstations. These are the same icons that I've used when I assigned it to them. And so um, students are able to pick three in a row or three down. Um, but the really cool thing about um, our choice boards is um, my students can, and you should be able to see it, um, my students can click the icon and then it tells them what they're supposed to do in case they forget. Amazing. And that's a lot of fun for, for me <laughs> and for them uh, because it, it, it helps them to know where to go. Um, but then also what I love about this is that it also holds them accountable. So this is their daily discussion post. And it's basically all the all of their choices for this time around. And I'll be switching them out over the spring break. Um, but so 
so they get to post. Um, I did go to kids or kids, uh, RAS kids today with Dianara, and so my students will just, you know, they'll post. And so we started February 27th, and today I went to Art and Sock Puppet Miss B, but they're typing up and they're writing, and I tell them, you know, use your use your um, resources here. And so if you, it's a big string. I've got 62 posts wow. um, of my students. Yeah. And myself, um, I try to go back. I, I went back once or twice to just encourage them. You know, good job, guys. Super. That's so, a cool way to interact with them afterwards, too, and hold them accountable. As you say, that's fantastic. Yes. And I remind them that if you've already posted, you know, for if you already went to art, you don't go there again. And so we're still learning how where they can go and not going to the same place over and over. But I, like I said, I noticed that even in my classroom, but it was just they were so engaged and um, you could tell that they were. Um, enjoying themselves and it's the same workstations they've been doing since the beginning of the year just different elements added to it and then with Schoology and they they really have enjoyed it a lot so so cool I love that thank you for showing us that that's such an, yeah. such an exciting tool that they used and and I love that something that we we covered in our blended learning program yeah. and put right into action in your classroom that's so exciting I did like the next day <laughs> <laughs> clearly they enjoyed it those 10 minutes of quiet probably completely paid off for the half hour you created it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little longer than that. But you know what? I don't ever have to create it again. It's already done and I just save it to resources and they're ready for next year. <laughs> so it's I love it. <laughs> um, you know, Dr. Gentune from, um, I took a GT training and this is something that kind of really sort of it sparked something in me that I thought, wow, you know, I really need to step up my game and you know I was nominated and I actually won digital innovator of the year for elementary in my district and that said a lot about what I, I I've done but I also felt like I didn't share enough and I really wanted to get to be able to share what I do and I am the technology champion for my school um, and it's important for me to kind of train myself and get familiar with it and then to be able to share it. And so I think that this time around, I've, I maybe have done a little bit more and I can figure out a little bit the summer of what I else I want to do, but I definitely feel like I want to share. Way to share with the other people, especially if sharing is a big goal for you, being able to not yes. start from where you are and gradually and slowly and steadily build more and more capacity in your own classroom and in your own skill set and hone that craft then sharing it out like this on a sway page is fantastic or being able to share them using the resources that you have in Schoology, giving other teachers those ideas. And then as they become inspired, you can really harness that collective power that they have too. And all of that intellectual yes. property that you're able to share with one another so that you're not each reinventing the wheel. You're really, mm -hmm. you're really becoming a, a sort of group thinking um, uh, tool to them as well as they are to you. Yes. That's fantastic. Teresa, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. This is so cool and so exciting. We'll share out the Sway page so that people can take a look at that too on our own time because there's some fantastic content on there. But thanks yeah. so much for providing us with all these fantastic ideas and your enthusiasm around it. This is a really cool place to start. One day you can be like Teresa. <laughs> My name is Jesse Buto. Uh, I teach at Randolph Heights Elementary in St. Paul, Minnesota. I've been a teacher for 13 years. I teach a four or five combined class, so a split grade class. Um, I've been using Schoology now for really two years solidly. This is my second year using Schoology. Um, I have been named a Minnesota um, TBS Digital Innovator for 2016 and an Apple Distinguished Educator in 2017. So those work that I've been doing um, has really um, been important and Schoology has been a big piece of that for this last year in, in moving my class forward in a digital way. Uh, so I had had in my head for a while the idea of trying to um, turn the math curriculum over to my students and figure out a way, you know, our district has built, has broken all the standards into specific learning, or we have specific learning targets. And then we have assessments for each of those learning targets. And, I, and I've been tr playing with the idea of how can I get my students to independently ch kind of choose where they want to go mm -hmm. and um, say, you know, I'm going to study this geometric um, uh, learning target, I'm going to become a master at it, and then I'm going to take an assessment on it. So how can I create content that the students can work on by themselves, and then how do I get that assessment to them in, a, in an easy way? 
so I jumped in and I started putting everything in Schoology. I started to use Schoology sort of as the backbone of my of my math time. Mm -hmm. So Schoology was the, the place where the kids would go. They would all, everything would be organized for them. They would be able to find it easily, work on it easily. It may take them to other places, but we always return to Schoology as sort of the home base, the home space. Like a central hub. Exactly. I, I really look at it as like the skeleton of what I do. Other things, maybe the muscle, maybe the thing that they actually are working in, but mm -hmm. that skeleton, that piece that holds everything together is what Schoology does for me. Um, I sort of abandoned the idea of, sort of that complete voice and choice and letting them choose whatever they wanted to do. And instead it became a self-paced scope and sequence. So there's a prescribed sequence of the units, but the kids are able to go through it at any pace that they want. So I've got students who go really quickly through units and I've got kids who, who need a little bit more time and work too much, work much slow, more slowly and they can work at their pace. And so what that's freed me up to do is, is give my, um, those kids who kind of get it or it comes to them easily, it gives them something to do, something to work on. And it frees me up then to work with those students who are struggling and really devote my time to working with those students. Um, so I've got fourth grade units, fifth grade units. I've got some sixth grade units for the, for at, you know, at the end of the year, once we pass our tests or for kids who have moved on really fast and finished all of fifth grade, I've got a few sixth grade standards as well. Um, if, you, if we go into one of them, you'll see that they're broken down. I broke them down by unit. Um, and this is different than the way our district has broken them down. But I instead took them and broke them down in unit that corresponds with the learning target for the state standard. So within the, a unit, I try to organize it into consistent pieces. I always start with a, an overview. So a page that just sort of describes what it is I'm looking for. Um, there may be some um, instruction in here. I try to keep it text light because I know my students tend not to read the text when it's in front of them. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, sometimes I'll put little Easter eggs into my text and say at the end of a paragraph, I'll say, if you read this paragraph, come find me and I'll give you something. Um, and I usually get one or two students per time who actually come and say, oh, I read that sentence. Uh, so I know, knowing that I try to keep it image heavy and I try to use videos whenever possible mm -hmm. um, because that's really a good way for me to explain. So in this one, I just have some pictures and saying, you know, can you, do you see the triangles in this picture? Oh wait, how now do you see the triangles in this picture? And then at the bottom, I always um, include what are the criteria that I'm looking for in this unit? I'm asking you to draw shapes and I'm um, in this ass Schoology assignment. And then I'm asking you to create an artifact that is create a book that shows triangles both in the real world and on paper. So it does sound like you've really embraced that transition from direct instruction to facilitation and, and coach. Yep, I, I have not taught a whole group lesson in front of the class in a year and a half. Um, well, I guess now you're in three quarters. And um, instead, I'm doing small groups, I'm doing individual work, I'm moving around the classroom assisting kids um, wherever they're at. And it's an amazing transition, it's, it's, it feels uh, it feels right. It feels really good. I feel much more involved in where they are on a daily basis and I, because I know where they are and I know what they're understanding and not understanding. Have you noticed a shift um, in seeing students feeling more empowered as they've taken sort of a more uh, hands-on role in, in, in their education compared to when it was more direct instruction? Oh yeah, absolutely. Much more empowered. I mean, even just the idea that, that when they get stuck or they see that red dot over and over and over again, they come and find me. Whereas mm -hmm. before they try to hide it or they wouldn't care or they just do it and not know. Now they know I'm getting it wrong. I need to go find Mr. Butcher. I need to go get some help. I, I'm, I, this is my responsibility. What I have done, though, is tried to train my parents as much as possible to, to sort of check their child's progress in Schoology. I said the grades are up there. They will be up there for you to look at so that you can see if kids are making due dates or they, they're done not done what are some what are some starting points what are some things you can do to get started right away utilizing an LMS or utilizing Schoology at, at this level you know it's it's got to be a small start um, I'm gonna pop this link into Schoology and there you go guys and you're just gonna go straight there mm -hmm. uh, so something even as simple as that the huge time saver and the huge hassle saver of pointing kids in a direction on a website is really amazing um, handing kids a PDF is really simple Pop it into Schoology, say open it up, put it in Notability or some other, you know, um, some other thing that works the same way, and and you've got it. Um, 
And from there, it's about starting to build small units. I can say, you know, start with one unit that you want to build and put the instructions in the school. Gym. So start with uh, just an assignment here, do this, take a picture of it, upload it back into the assignment. Um, just moving yourself slowly. The more you do, the more it really takes over. You know, I started with math and um, I've spent the last year and a half or more working almost nonstop on building these math units. It's been an incredible amount of work. But now that most of them are built and up and running, I don't have to do that again. Right. right. Well, Jesse, I'm so thankful for your time today. You know, I think that's one of the things I take away from, from is, is seeing, you know, your students creating. The, the thing that I try to do in my classroom is, consum is creation over consumption. Uh, it's not enough to have passive screen time. It's not enough for them to just be consuming media. And consuming media. If they're not creating, then they're not using their tools for what they're there for. Uh, we need to be teaching our kids to create. We need to be teaching them to use this media and these tools for the power that they are. And it's that creation that is going to create the learning and really seal that stuff in. I can give them a lot of problems to um, to just do over and over and over again, but it's not until they have to explain it back to me, until they have to create something that shows that they really understand it, that it really sinks in and becomes real. So creation is the key. I hope you read this book. So we are back, and I hope that everyone enjoyed those two uh, user stories. Kelly, you hadn't had a chance to see those. Any takeaways from, from those two chats? Uh, well, you know, you mentioned earlier the importance of starting with something small. And I think that, um, you know, both of in, you know, kindergarten to fifth grade, there's, you know, obviously a big range of, of grades in between. But really, it's the same idea of starting with something that is really going to be helpful, you know, either for like ease of, you know, access, productivity, like Jesse said, just throw in a link at first, maybe throw in some directions, and then let it build from there. But I also, you know, loved how they talked about Yes, there's some front end work that has to happen to get that to work smoothly. But then once it's really built, you know, you can reuse that content over and over again uh, and update it. Um, so I, I also loved how they were so student centered in how they were approaching what they did. So, you know, the choice boards that um, that we saw from Teresa and then you know, that whole idea of students, you know, if for Jesse, I liked his point about not letting them just choose anything but structuring their learning, but they can choose, you know, when they do it and at, at what time, and in some cases, how they um, how they show that knowledge, so. Yeah, and I think another takeaway you, you heard them both talk about is the importance of being organized, like that pre-work we talked about, an organized plan, having a strategy, and then, you know, the piece that, that they are trailblazers, so they didn't really have, but maybe can become for others, is, is that personalized um, support and help and consultation. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, everyone. Bye, everyone.